Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio. And in today's video, I'm going to share a brand new technique that I have learned. Yes, you can teach an old dog new tricks. I've been painting 20 years. I've never used this technique and I love it. How did I not know about this? I can't wait to share it with you. I have used it in so many of my paintings. I've actually used it in every painting that I've done since I learned this technique. I used it in my little Carolina Wren painting. That was the very first time and I was so excited. And so I went on to paint other paintings with it. This is a work in progress. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm using it in this painting. This painting is not done. I used it a lot in this painting. I used it in this painting. I used it in all of these paintings. All right, let me put these back. I don't know. And yes, by the way, all those paintings are available as start to finish Patreon tutorials. I have such a treat for you today because I think everyone is going to be able to use this new technique to new to me anyway in a lot of your paintings anywhere where you need really soft but dark darks this is a way to do it so for example let's look at the painting that i'm working on right now this is my cat flurkin and he has a lot of dark stripes and also think in terms of anytime you have a dark tree that has soft edges dark hair this girl's dark hair the the dark wah, wah. i am not graceful the darks in the disc of this sunflower they need to hold their shape they need to stay put i don't want them to bloom out too much yet i also want them to stay dark so how do you get darks that aren't stiff and hard edged but they stay dark i'm about to show you <laughs> and by the way i'm always on the lookout for cool new techniques so if you have something really exciting and new that you've learned that you're using in a lot of your paintings lately that have totally changed the game for you i would love to hear them in my comments and if i feature your idea I will of course mention your name and it's just really fun to learn from each other. And by the way, that reminds me, I do have an online free community on Facebook and I learn so much from my community and I hope my community learns a lot from me and it's a two way street. We get a lot from each other. You can post your paintings there. We can get to know each other. I will comment on your painting if you post. And if I don't, it's because I didn't see it. And I post on almost every single painting that gets posted in my Facebook group. So you can get a lot of ideas on how to improve your painting. In fact, I will tell you this painting right here, I could not have done it without my community because I wasn't sure what color to make the background water behind her and really make the colors vibrate the most beautifully. So I went into Photoshop and I put a bunch of different options and then I posted them all on my Facebook group and it was unanimous and obvious which was my community's favorite and I went on to use that feedback to finish my painting. It helped so much. So a community is a powerful thing and we have a great time at my community. So I, I do hope you join us there. It's free. It's a totally free Facebook group and you'll also stay in touch with me a little closer. So when I do have a new video and you don't want to miss it, you'll see it on my Facebook group. So come and join the fun. But anyway, what was I even talking about? <laughs> I was getting excited about my community. Okay. All right, let's, let's look at the first example of how I use this technique. And I'm gonna show you footage of me painting too. So um, yes, we're gonna actually look at real footage of me painting this, but see how he's got these dark stripes and they have to hold their shape of stripes, but they have to be soft all at the same time. And by the way, I don't think that I would have been able to hang this on my scaffolding of knowledge also without Joseph Zabukvich's watercolor clock, which I did a video on that a while back and I will link it in one of these corners. And Zabukvich's watercolor clock talks about the four different paint consistencies, one being butter. And I was like, butter? That's straight from the tube. You can paint with straight from the tube watercolor? What? I always thought it's watercolor. You gotta add water to your paint, girl. But <laughs> you don't. You can just put water on your paper and then you can put the butter consistency straight from the tube paint onto your paper. Guess who taught me this? Y'all go give her some props. Go tell her. If you go take a tutorial from this lady because you learned about her from me, please let her know because I really strongly believe in artists supporting artists supporting living artists and Jane Davies does amazing watercolor tutorials. I'm getting chills just thinking about how grateful I am to her for this one technique that has changed so much for me. 
And so go check out her tutorials and they're beautiful and you'll learn so much from her and tell her you learned about her from me because I really appreciate that. I like building my community in that way too. All right, so I'm gonna show you next how I painted these dark areas in her hair. So let's take a look. All right, so here is the actual footage from my Patreon tutorial, which I sped up times two because this was over six hours of painting and I didn't wanna make a six hour long tutorial. And so if you would like to watch this tutorial, it is in my $13 tier on my Patreon. And um, so here you see me getting paint straight from the tube. I've pre-wet her hair. And then everywhere that I want it dark, I get straight from the tube butter consistency paint. And when you apply it to the wet paper, you can kind of uh, activate it a little by brushing it on and then kind of running your brush through it to kind of smooth it out as much as you want. But the wonderful thing about this technique is you can use granulating paint like here I'm using burnt sienna in her hair and granulating earth pigments like burnt sienna granulate out and they also stay dark as they dry. They have a less of a drying shift. So this gives a really beautiful texture to her hair. And in fact, Jane Davies uses this technique with granulating paints a lot to paint her beautiful wolves with beautiful granulating texture. But you could also use non-granulating paints in all kinds of different scenarios. So I want you to imagine from this tip, uh, take this tip and think to yourself, what could I do with this with the things I like to paint? And it doesn't have to be granulating paint. But um, here I'm just following the flow of her hair. And when you're painting hair in general, you paint the shapes in the hair. You don't paint individual hairs. So I'm painting clumps of hair and painting in the direction of the hair. And this hair had to be really dark because it is the darkness of the hair that is going to make the light on her face really look like her face, make her face look like it's really glowing. So if I didn't get my darks dark enough that are right next to the light side of her face, this would not have been nearly as effective in getting her face looking like it's glowing and being lit by the sun. So getting my darks dark was very important. And that's one of the many reasons why I turned to this particular technique, because I wanted to get the hairs that were next to her face nice and dark. And I also wanted a beautiful granulating texture, which was a little bit different than the other textures in the painting. Before we leave Swimming Girl, let's look at how I use this technique in her eyes. So those of you who follow my cat tutorials know for cats, I have a formula for painting cat eyes. But the funny thing is about cat eyes and a lot of other subjects is when there's a rule for one thing, though that rule will usually apply to other things. And that is true for human eyes. And you can use the same formula. That formula is I divide the eye into thirds and the top third of the iris is dark. The middle of the iris is medium or local color, the actual color of the iris. And then the bottom third of the iris is lighter. So I used this technique to get the top third of her eye really dark. And I used paint straight from the tube in the top of the eye. And the whole eye is damp so that when I touch this butter consistency paint that we learned about in Zabukvich's watercolor clock, it kind of just melts onto the paper and makes a really nice transition into the rest of the eye. And then I can use lifting techniques as needed to lighten the bottom third of the eye like you see me doing here. I'm taking a clean, thirsty brush and just kind of gently rubbing at the bottom to lighten the bottom third of the eye. So this new technique using butter consistency paint is so useful and you can use it in so many different scenarios. All right, you guessed it. Next, we're going to look at how I used it in the sunflower disc. It's so cool. Love this. I'm going to get some burnt sienna straight from the tube. This is a new technique that i am um, been experimenting with. And I'm just going to put little dots of that pure burnt sienna. And again, I'm painting this on some level of damp paper. 
And we learned about that in Zbuk Fitch's Watercolor Clock too, where he paints on varying levels of wet paper. There can be glistening, very wet paper. There can be buckling, damp paper. There can be dry paper. And on each of those different uh, consistencies of water on your paper, you will get different effects. And that is true with this technique too. So I'm painting on buckling paper, kind of wet, damp paper with this very thick butter consistency paint. All right, and then as this goes into more and more buckling, I'm gonna put in um, some clean, clear drops of water to see if I can get it to cauliflower. Continue splatting water on it as it dries. So splatting water on it as it goes into buckling will create cauliflowers and it will create more interesting texture that sunflower discs have a lot of texture. Um, getting burnt sienna straight from the tube and adding a, a dip of water just to get it workable because I do want a good bit of the burnt sienna in this disc. I even get a little bit of um, French ultramarine to chocolate it up. And then notice what happens next. I'm going to use my eye formula to paint these discs. Let's watch and see how I do that. To give it some dimension, I'm gonna make this part where I imagine the sun hitting it a little bit lighter. So I'm just dipping up some um, color out of that area and then I'm gonna go back in with just some pure orange and just loosen it back up and by the way not to be cheeky but think about how much you've learned in this video alone imagine how much i pack into my full length start to finish real-time tutorials with full voiceover yes i pack them full of these kinds of tips that will really help accelerate your art journey and even if you're not interested in painting cats or sunflowers or girls swimming the lessons that you learn from watching my tutorials can be applied to the subjects you want to paint. That's how I design my tutorials. And remember, if you join for a year, you can get critiques or help with works in progress by emailing me your work and asking for advice, either critiques or help getting started, whatever it is you need help with. And I'd love to get to know you a little bit better that way too. And I just want to let you know that the general direction I'm trying to go in with my channel is to explore more and more, not just the how, but the why of watercolor and art in general. If you do other mediums, a lot of my videos are going to apply to you. Like the video that I had hit really well a few weeks ago, it's my tip that I learned from Charles Reed about using the strength of your local colors instead of relying on contrast to make your paintings really strong. And I am making a point to read books and watch videos. And as I learn things, I pass them on to you. So I hope you'll subscribe. Oh, and by the way, if you like all these paintings and you'd like to learn how to paint them in watercolor, that's kind of what my Patreon is all about, is painting a lot of more advanced paintings in watercolor, a lot of dreamy animals. If you like painting cats, you're gonna love my Patreon. But I also do other things. I do quite a few flowers. I've been doing portraits because I've been wanting to paint Parker, my son, my eight-year-old. I've got quite a few portraits. Of course, this girl swimming will be on there as soon as I get the monster of a video <laughs> edited. Please pray for me. And a lot more. So you can go check out my Patreon for free. You can join for free and just kind of look around and see if you like what I offer. I have a collections tab where you can see all the different tutorials that I have. I have over a hundred tutorials now on my Patreon. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. And I hope you'll join me there. I, I hope you'll join me on my Facebook community group. And until next time, go watercolor your world. Bye everybody. Um, <clears throat> I'm just getting ahead of myself. I'm so excited.